Hey everybody, thank you for joining me. Um, we're going to continue the hand calculation series in this video and we're going to be discussing the limitations of these hand calculations. So I think it's helpful to discuss, you know, some situations where hand calculations might be useful. And as we've seen in some of our examples, it's useful for calculating the dose in a variety of different geometries. Uh, it's also might be used in situations, you know, in a palliative or emergent setting. Uh, could be used for simple 2D cases, maybe if you just have a single field or a simple ant post <clears throat> geometry. It can be used for independent verification of a more complicated treatment. Uh, so if the treatment is calculated using some computer system, you can actually go and verify by hand uh, that the dose calculation is reasonably accurate. This can be performed actually by a physicist manually, or it can even be performed by a computer-based system uh, that essentially performs the same, the same sort of thing. It uh, can also be used with intensity modulated treatments, VMAT and ARC therapy as well. Uh, but you really start to run into issues with these um, because, you know, in an ARC therapy, your SSD is constantly changing as the gantry is rotating. Uh, the depth is also changing across the beam. Um, and, you know, the field size might be changing as well. Uh, so you might need to use some sort of average value for the field size. So it's pretty hard to apply the hand calc formalism in some cases. And in fact, in some cases, it might actually break down completely. And we're going to jump into some of the cases where that might be the case uh, right now. So as I alluded to, there are some situations where a hand calc may not achieve a desired level of accuracy. And the reason that hand calcs break down stem from the assumptions that are made in a hand calc. So the first one is that the dose is calculated in water with a flat surface. And the second one is that transient charged particle equilibrium is assumed to exist along the beam path. And uh, there are numerous situations where these two assumptions are not met. So let's start with the issue of a non-flat surface. So on the left here, I draw our stereotypical hand calculation geometry. Uh, the beam is normally incident upon the phantom surface. But does that situation look anything like the situation on the right? And I would say no. Uh, so on the right, we have a beam that is obliquely incident on the patient. And you can see that across that beam, your calculation depth is changing, right? You have more tissue on the left side of the beam compared to the right. So this is going to throw off all of your calculation factors, like your TMR. It's going to throw off your scatter factors, your off-axis ratios. Uh, so everything kind of goes out of whack when you have a obliquely incident field like this one. So that's one issue with the hand calc formalism. Another is the lack of transient charge particle equilibrium, or TCPE. Uh, so if you remember this plot I showed during the PDD formalism video, um, we have this buildup region here at the surface, and this is a region of non-equilibrium. There is no simple relationship between the kerma and the absorbed dose in this buildup region, whereas beyond that depth of D max where TCPE is established, uh, there is that simple relationship. Uh, but the hand calculation formalism is not valid here. And the reason is because the buildup region is very hard to quantify. It's hard to predict what the dose is going to look like in the buildup region. And it's very dependent on the detector you use, the volume of that detector, its energy response, and all sorts of different factors. So it's not valid in that region. It's also not valid in the penumbra of fields. So here's that profile diagram that I showed. So it's not valid in any of those extreme dose fall off penumbra regions for the same reason as the buildup region. This is another region of charged particle disequilibrium, uh, which again is very hard to quantify with the detectors we use to acquire our beam data. So it's very hard to predict what the penumbra is gonna look like and therefore the hand calculation formalism is not valid. So with any hand calculation, it's crucial that charged particle equilibrium exists uh, in the place that you're calculating the dose. And kind of extending that penumbra idea a little bit, uh, it also applies to small fields. So this is a profile for a regular sized field. I apologize for my shaky drawing skills of this profile. Um, but you can see that has a has a sharp, well-defined penumbra. Uh, but just let's say that we bring the jaws in and we decrease the, that field size further and further. Eventually those penumbras, the one on each side, are going to overlap with each other, which is the situation that you see on the right. And since the penumbra is overlapping, there's really no point of charged particle equilibrium within that field. 
And so for very small fields like this, the hand calculation formalism is not valid because we do not have charge particle equilibrium conditions. Another big issue with the hand calc formalism is the issue of heterogeneity. So I draw again the typical geometry we're dealing with in a hand calc. So a beam, incident normal on a phantom surface, but does that situation look anything like this? This is an example lung case with a right posterior oblique beam coming in, uh, treating this lung tumor. And in the beam path, we have lung, we have bone, we have tumor, we have skin, we have all sorts of different uh, tissues. And also we have a lot of different densities in the beam path too. And that density heterogeneity causes charge particle, charge particle equilibrium to not exist. And I hope you can see the issue with this. When we're transitioning from lung to tumor, as sort of like a, a lung tumor interface or a lung soft tissue interface, uh, that's very reminiscent of the air phantom interface that we get um, when we're, you know, in our hand calculation geometry. And so we're going to get that same buildup effect in the periphery of that tumor or soft tissue or whatever we're going into. And as we know, charge particle equilibrium does not exist in those buildup regions. And so the hand calculation formalism is affected by the presence of heterogeneity as well. In fact, if we're looking at something like lung tissue, charge particle equilibrium doesn't even exist in lung because the charge particle range is actually a lot larger in lung just because of that lower density. It's not interacting as much. And one of the assumptions of charge particle equilibrium is that the range of the charge particles is small relative to the photon attenuation. And since that range is so large, uh, there is no area of charge particle equilibrium. And it should be fairly obvious that the patient interior is not water. So this particular example, this beam has bone and lung and soft tissue all present in the, in the beam path. And neither of those, any of those are technically water equivalent. And uh, since the medium is changing so much, the interaction cross sections, you know, for uh, photoelectric effect and pair production and Compton and the electron stopping powers would change in all, all three of those different tissues. And so that's another issue with the hand calc formalism is that the patient interior is not water. And there are some things we can try and do to mitigate the effects of heterogeneity. We can use something known as the equivalent path length so if you look here along the central axis, the physical distance to that, the center of that tumor is about seven centimeters. But if we look at something called the water equivalent distance, that's what WED stands for, it's about 3.4 centimeters. And so what that accounts for is basically the varying Hounsfield unit along that beam path. And it basically scales that, um, scales the actual physical depth by the density of the tissue that's present in the beam path. So um, since we're passing through so much lung tissue in this case, the water equivalent distance is actually shorter because it's as if we were passing through a, a smaller amount of water. So that's kind of a, you know, a crude approximation that we can make. It doesn't account for the fact that, you know, lung tissue is not water and bone is not water, but it, you know, it's an approximation and it um, makes our calculations slightly more accurate. So we can, we can do that. So there are a few limitations to the hand calculation formalism, as we've seen. So how can we actually overcome these limitations? Well, the answer is to use complex dose calculation algorithms that are usually implemented in computers. We have the technology to be able to develop these new algorithms, and these algorithms are able to better model things like photon attenuation and also electron transport. Uh, so you can actually get a physical model of those buildup regions and, you know, regions where uh, charge particle equilibrium actually doesn't exist. And so uh, typically, uh, to overcome the limitations, we use these complex algorithms. And that's about all I have for this video, so thank you for tuning in.